everyone, this is Sean Wist with JoeBlow.com, and welcome to a very special episode of the Star Wars Minute. In this video, we're going to break down the official trailer for The Force Awakens. Um, there's a lot of ground to cover, so let's get to it. As the trailer starts, we find Daisy Ridley's character Rey uh, spelunking around what appears to be a crashed Star Destroyer on the planet of Jakku. It's a really cool little intro for her character, uh, showing off... Um, kind of how sheltered uh, yet capable she is. And this really sets up the shot of Rey looking off into the distance as a ship takes off into the atmosphere. It's a nice way to mirror what was going on with Luke Skywalker in the original film and immediately creates a, a familiarity with the character. This brings us to John Boyega's Finn, who seems to have spent the bulk of his life with the remnants of the Empire, which are now the First Order. Uh, interesting to note that the crashing TIE fighter was probably hijacked by Finn in a scene that we saw in the previous trailer. As Finn's voiceover states, he's probably more than capable in a fight, uh, but now he's without a cause. So right off the bat, this trailer has told us that Rey and Finn are equipped to handle the dangers to come, arguably more so than a, I don't know, a moisture farmer. Kylo Ren's introduction is, is bathed in this gorgeous red light from what appears to be a, a massive laser in the background. Now, does it belong to the ship featured in the latest poster? Probably, except that's no ship, but we'll come back to that. Our first shot of Oscar Isaac's Poe Dameron has him being tortured by Kylo. The explosion that follows in the next shot almost appears to be a vision of some sort that Kylo is showing him, although it could just be a clip that matches the intensity of Dameron's anguish. If so, maybe that decimation is work of the laser that was established in this other shot. As the Millennium Falcon flies into view, we can hear a gorgeous new arrangement of Han and Leia's theme from Empire Strikes Back. The maneuver that follows here is really cool. Uh, it's a favorite from the original trilogy, you might recognize it. Uh, from a few shots. Meanwhile, Rey is questioning Han about the story she's heard, of which he confirms are true. He then references the dark side and the Jedi, and that they're real. Given this information, we can assume that Luke Skywalker did not establish a new Jedi Order following the events of Return of the Jedi. Or if he did, he failed. And this is a great little moment to see that Han Solo is imparting this wisdom about the Jedi on the same ship where he once claimed that he had no belief in their power whatsoever. Kid, I've flown from one side of this galaxy to the other. I've seen a lot of strange stuff, but I've never seen anything to make me believe there's one all-powerful force controlling everything. There's no mystical energy field controls my destiny. It's all a lot of simple tricks and nonsense. It's true. All of it. And so this shot, we hit light speed in reverse, and <laughs> it's, it's too f***ing cool. Uh, it's great. I love it. So J.J. Abrams has already stated that Kylo is a pseudonym and that he actually belongs to the Knights of Ren, who are not Sith, um, but they have allied themselves with the First Order. In this shot, we have what appears to be more of those knights, uh, given that their armor is very similar to his, although uh, Kylo looks like he's the only one rocking a lightsaber. There's a few clips here from this battle on a, a forest planet, although in this shot in particular, if you take a look in the background, you can see the water that the X-Wings are kicking up because of how low they're flying, and it's just, it's just a really cool detail. This shot is really interesting in that it seems to be your, your typical kind of pre-battle preparation, uh, except for the exchange between Poe and Finn. You know, Poe gives him that pat and he's on his way, but Finn lingers. Given Finn's background as a stormtrooper, I'm thinking maybe he knows a little bit more about Poe than he's leading on here. I'd also be surprised if Kylo's torture of Poe that we saw earlier wasn't a factor. Also, if you look in the background, you can see that Finn is uh, heading towards the Millennium Falcon. Now this shot is a great example of how they inject character into BB-8. The way he keeps an eye on the, uh, the larger droid uh, walking past him is a, is a great little detail. It's kind of like that shot in the previous teaser where Rey and Finn are, are running away from the explosion and you can see BB-8 turn his head to, to look back. Touches like that really lend itself to creating a, a character you can buy into. It's also worth noting that right before the shot ends, uh, you can catch a glimpse of the Mandalorian insignia right at the top on one of those banners. Of course, any fan of Boba Fett uh, is very familiar with that symbol. Obviously, Luke is being downplayed big time in the trailers and the new poster, but uh, odds are he's out there somewhere with R2, you know, just doing Jedi Hermit things. Similarly, uh, Captain Phasma is uh, only good for walking around in the, the previews here. But, you know, she looks cool doing it, so no complaints. Now, this appears to be an, an integral scene from the film, with a few visual clues to, to take note of. First off, uh, a lot of people are saying that they spot Chewie here, because there appears to be some fur to the right. 
I think what they're referring to is actually branches. If you pay close attention to the shot, uh, you'll see there's branches in the background on both the left and right of Ray here. You also note that this appears to be the snowy forest area that's home to the, the last couple of shots in the trailer. But we'll come back to that in a second. I think our biggest clue here regarding the body on the ground is located in the lower left-hand corner. That absolutely looks like the shoulder of someone sporting a brown jacket. Uh, now, there are two people who can be seen wearing a brown jacket in a trailer, and we see both of them in the following shot. Feel free to come to your own conclusions on who that might be. I just, I just hope they're not dead. We then come to a few shots featuring a battle over a snowy planet. Uh, you'll note that there's a trench there in the background. So now let's go back to the poster. That Death Star looking ship is actually Starkiller Base, which is defined as an ice planet that was converted into a stronghold for the First Order. It's armed with a fiercely destructive new weapon capable of destroying an entire star system. That red laser we saw earlier, yeah, it's all starting to come together. As the trailer races towards uh, its conclusion, we see a lot of cool little clips. I love this one where the, the bridge is exploding and at the bottom of the screen you can see a little mouse droid is just kind of kind of leisurely leaving the area. Kind of like, oh, I should probably go. <laughs> it, it, it's a great shot. I love it. There's also this quick moment between Leia and Han that's uh, more emotional than anything we've seen in the prequels. And that brings us to the final shots here. All right, so the lightsaber Finn has is certain to be a, uh, an important plot point in the film as it was featured in the previous teaser. And you may recognize it as Luke's lightsaber that was given to him in the original film, uh, which he went on to lose uh, at Cloud City. Now, we've seen the shot of Kylo Ren igniting his broadsaber in the very first teaser, uh, but take note of the shot here. His helmet is gone, revealing actor Adam Driver's hair. So you theorists who thought that Luke was Kylo Ren, way off base. Now, aside from looking oddly familiar to a member of the Night's Watch or something, we can assume that Kylo got into some shit before this clip happens. We never see who he initially ignites his lightsaber for, so given the snowy, wooded location, things probably don't turn out too well for someone else. In any case, uh, Finn's look at the end here totally sells the, the danger of the situation. I mean, the man is pumping himself up, ready to take on Kylo, and the in that small moment when Kylo begins to swing his broadsaber, you can just see that, that look of fear in his eyes, that that oh shit moment. And that is exactly the kind of emotional weight that was sorely lacking from the prequel trilogy. And you find that throughout the entire trailer here. Um, everyone is carrying some emotional weight and you completely buy into their actions. We know next to nothing about Finn and have heard him say all of two lines in this trailer, but we, we care about him already. Uh, the man was raised with the skill set and come the end of the trailer, he's, he's found a cause to fight for and we're rooting for him already. It's also refreshing to see that the actors are completely hyped to get this movie released to the masses. I mean, check out John Boyega. This was his reaction uh, when the trailer hit. Yep, 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 What? 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 Which is fantastic. And uh, if you didn't think Daisy Ridley was absolutely adorable before, then you... You gotta see this. There are stories about what happened. Oh my god, it's amazing! <laughs> <laughs> By all accounts, it seems like Abrams and company have, have led this saga into the right direction. And the only thing left to do now is just wait until December 18th gets here. But thank you so much for joining us for this special edition of the Star Wars Minute. I hope you loved the trailer as much as I did. Of course, you can check out our weekly Star Wars news column on our YouTube channel and JoeBlow.com every Friday. And until next time, may the Force be with you.